In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to save UTM parameters for over a month or more on your WordPress website. I'm using Elementor for this one, um, but I recommend that you do use Elementor because that's what I'm going to mainly be going through. So if you're wondering what website template I'm using here, um, this is just an Elementor template that comes with Elementor Pro. Um, if you're wondering what these hot spots are, uh, this is from a video that I did um, it's in my channel. I'll try to link it above. And then the other thing that I want to note here is I have another video where I show you how to set up the UTM parameters on an Elementor form. So I recommend you watch that video first and then come back because it's kind of a continuation from that video. So once you've set up your UTM parameters here, um, and the ones that I used are these here, um, and they're just your general UTM parameters. But real quick, if you just want to learn how to add the UTM parameters, how to just add one so you don't have to go back to that video, go into Elementor, go into the form there, click Add Item, and then just go ahead and make sure that the type is set to hidden. Grab your UTM parameter as an example. I'm going to do the UTM source. I already have it on here, but I'm going to do it again. You can set it as your label name if you would like, or you could change it to whatever label name you want. Then go to advanced here. This part's really important. Make sure that the ID is the label name. Um, it's a UTM name, sorry. And then over here on your default value, go to dynamic tags. And you want to go ahead and choose request parameter. And then make sure it's a get. The parameter name should be your UTM um, there. That's how you set these up. Just wanted to show you guys that. Um, so go ahead and do that. Then from here, we want to go into um, the element, the WordPress dashboard. Be quick. Go into. Now, once you've set all this up, go into the WordPress dashboard, go into Elementor, custom code. Now, if you don't have Elementor Pro or using something else, you can do the code snippet and then add the custom code, um, probably somewhere at the bottom end, just so then you don't load the entire script there. So I'm going to paste my script in here and I will explain it. Um, I'll just go through it there, what you really need to change. I'm going to call this um, UT save, save UTMs. Uh, of course, you can name that whatever you would like. Okay. Now, I'm going to remove this here above. I noticed it there, and I think that's it. Okay. So, the main things that you want to change and update from this is if you're using different UTM names, make sure you go ahead and up that, update that here. If you need to remove some, you can. So just add your new UTM here, and then go ahead and do the same right here. And these, both these variables here, you're gonna have to um, change, right? So just wanna make a note of that. Um, I do wanna mention that this code does come with a refer URL that you do have to set up. If you want, you don't have to. Um, but if you don't want that, um, I'll have a different version where you don't have to have this other code here. This other is for refer URL, which we're going to set up right now. I do have a video that shows you how to do that already, but I'm going to do that really quick here. So I'm just going to grab this. Um, this is what it's called here. Um, so I'm just going to grab this. And if you don't know what the refer URL, it's pretty much the first URL that the user came from, whether they came from Google, Yelp, or wherever. Um, that information is very useful, so I recommend you do this because you want to know where the user came from, right? And maybe you may not be using these UTMs. Um, sometimes they may come from Google and you won't have those UTMs attached, right? So you won't know. So this is where this is going to be very useful. So I'm just going to go ahead and set up another hidden. I'm going to do a label of initial underscore refer. Um, and then I'm going to go to advanced here. I'm going to set the ID to the same. I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, request parameter. Uh, that's something that you can have there. 
and then you're just going to go ahead and set that up here. You really don't need to do this part because regardless, it's going to go ahead and add it to the ID anyway, but it is just something good to have. Um, so just do that there and you should be all set. So now I'm going to go over this code a bit more here. If you want to go ahead and adjust the, um, maybe you want to set this to 60, 60 days and um, just ask ChatGBT to update this for the 60 days. Um, obviously you can just do 60 right here. You should be all set. Um, okay. And same thing here, you'd have to update it here for the refer um, URL there. This is mainly for the parameters and for the refer URL. Have a different version where it's not gonna have the refer URL in case you don't wanna have all that other code and you just want it for the UTMs. Uh, but I think that information is very useful there. Okay, so we already set up all the parameters, so we don't gotta do that anymore. Now we just need to go ahead and update this and just see if it actually works and just test it, right? So um unfortunately i can't really test refer url because i don't have a i don't have a link i would have to go ahead and click on it on google um to go to the website but since this is a local host it's not really going to show me that link uh it's just going to say that it's direct because i'm going to be pasting the url directly so it's not going to come in um google or anything like that but that's not where i came from so add your UTM parameter URL into your browser and then hit enter. And then that's going to take you to your website. Um, so now we have these UTM parameters. I haven't submitted. Well, actually, I just landed on here now. So now that I landed on here, um, let's go into inspect. And let's see if it saved the information. So we're going to application. You know what? It hasn't saved it yet because we haven't even hit publish. Very important, make sure you hit publish, entire website. Now, for those of you guys wondering, what if you don't want the, um, the script that goes ahead and adds the UTMs to the form load on every page, right? Let's say you only want that part to only load on the specific page where you have a form, which makes more sense, right? Where well, that's where this other this other updated code comes in. You can go ahead and have specific pages, set it to the contact, set it to just the home page. I might have two of these, for example, in case you want to use that, and you can just change the URL here, just the path um, to that page. It's fine. This is considered the home page, by the way. I just want to include that there just in case, um, in case you guys want to set that up. But let's go back to our original here. We already went ahead and updated it, uh, published it. So now let's go in here and let me hit enter. And let's go into inspect and let's go into the um, application local. Make sure you click on your um, local storage and your URL and you're going to see these right here. They're all already saved in local storage. So this information will save for about a month. It's gonna even tell me the initial refer. I came directly, but if I would've came from Google, I clicked the link on Google, it would've said the URL right here. Now you're probably wondering, well, I have the UTM on here on the URL. Like I mentioned, the user can come back randomly, go to your website, you know, they can go directly there without the, 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 the UTMs. And let me show you that the information still gets saved here. I go into application. You can see it's still here. Now, when I submit the form, let's test this out. Uh, John Doe. Test John at website.com, right? That's not it. Now you can see here, I don't have my UTMs. So when I submit this, if I didn't have that script, it wouldn't save any of that information. So let's go to the dashboard and let's see if it actually saved it. So let's go into the Elementor submissions. Drum roll. C. There we have it. Now the refer URL, that one didn't come through because like I mentioned, that is direct there. Um, so that's the only one that didn't really work on that front. So that one didn't work. It's because I didn't name it correctly. 
So in the code here, the input is actually supposed to be called refer URL, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and call it initial refer instead. I'm gonna update this code. You know what? You won't have that problem next time. Um, that's what I'm gonna update it to. So then you can follow along and not have that issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and resubmit it and then uh, we'll test it here. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and I resubmitted it, uh, the form there, and this is our third one, as you can see. Now it's added on here. So it's all set. Um, I really wanted to share this with you guys. I've been working on it for a while, uh, but I'm glad I finally made this video and it's really simple to set up once you do it. Um, if you have any questions on the code, just let me know and I'll try to help you guys out. If you need me to help you set this up, um, go to my website um, and maybe book a call with me and I can help you out as well. So that's it for this video. If you find it helpful, make sure to like it for the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.